to solve exponential and log equations, there's three basic strategies we're gonna use. Number one, we're gonna rewrite the original equation, be it log or exponential, in a form that allows us to take advantage of the one-to-one -one property. Number two, if we're given an exponential equation, we'll write it with logs and use the inverse property. Given exponential, use logs. Number three, if we're given a log equation, how do we know it's a, it's a log equation? Because it will say the words log. We're gonna use, we're gonna write it in exponential form and then take advantage of the inverse property. Solve the equation. E to the X equals 72. First things first. What type of equation is it? We have e to the x, it's an exponential equation. How do we solve exponential equations? Well, here is e to the x. This is y equals e to the x. We're going to use its inverse, y equals natural log x. Of course, that's also known as y equals log base e of x. Given the exponential, we'll use its inverse to solve. So how do we do that? Well, if we introduce natural log to both sides, whatever you do to the left side, you must do to the right side. This is really log base e, e to the x equals log base e of 72. I'm not gonna write it like that. And we know e log, log base e of e to the x will just give us x equals natural log 72. Now, if you do this in your calculator, you'll get about 4.28 or the exact answer is natural log of 72. If I say to you, solve this equation on a calculator, the first thing I would do is I would write this as e to the x minus 72 equals zero. Essentially what I've done is I've subtracted 72 from both sides. Now I'll write this as a function, f of x equals e to the x minus 72. Notice where there was a zero, I put f of x or y. So when is y zero? Well, I'll tell you, that's on the x-axis. So if I graph this equation, what I'm looking for is the x-intercept. If I now graph this function, and that, that will be here, if I graph e to the x, and we're gonna subtract 72 from that, and I graph that, and then I look with my graph, what I'm really concerned with is my x-intercept. So I'm gonna go menu, and I'm going to analyze graph, and I'm going to find the zeros. Where, from where? From there to there, and you can see I get 4.28, which is natural log 72. If we're asked to solve this equation, three times two to the x equals 42, notice two to the x is an exponential. How do I wanna solve that? With y equals log base two of x. In other words, if I recognize this is an exponential, I wanna use logs to solve it. As I've tried to stress many times, we first, I'll write it out, first isolate the exponential. That's what we must do. See this three? There's three of these things. That's not one, it's not isolated. So what we'll do to both sides is we'll divide by three and now we've got an isolated exponential function. How do I solve exponentials? I'm going to introduce logs. Now I'm gonna do this in one step here. If I introduce log base two to the left, I have to introduce log base two to the right. Now of all bases, why do I choose two? I'm guided by the base here. If this base matches this base, then these run off to number heaven and we're left with x is log two of 14. Now, if you don't have a calculator to tell you that log base two of argument 14 is about equal to 3.81, don't forget you have that change of base formula. 
14 wants to go north, let it. Two wants to go south, let it. And you could write this as log, you know what? I'm gonna use log base E, which is natural log of 14 over natural log of two, which is also equal to about 3.81. If I have this same equation, I wanna solve it with a calculator, I'll drag everything to one side. So if I subtract 42 from both sides, I'll have three times two to the X minus 42 equals zero. Now, if this were a function, I usually have Y in there or F of X equals three, two to the X minus 42. And where is Y equal to zero? Well, I'll tell you on the X axis. So we're looking for x-intercepts, which are also known as zeros. So if I want to graph this, I'll put in 3 times 2 to the power of x. Where are you, x? And outside the parentheses, we had minus 42. And if I graph that, I'm going to get this point. You can see it's between three and four already. Menu, I'm going to analyze the graph. And I'm looking for the x-intercepts, which are known as zeros, from there to there. And you can see I get that same answer, 3.8.